Um, hey everybody, welcome to the Salesforce integration part of this episode. We're going to be spending the time entirely with Richard, who's going to walk through yet again how to set up a Salesforce integration within Salesforce, and then we'll answer two Salesforce questions from the community. So let's get started. I understand you wanted to show us um, a little bit about Salesforce, right? How to get started maybe for uh, somebody who's interested in integrating? Yep. So yeah, we're going to uh, take a look at our uh, Pure Cloud for Salesforce integration. So um, I, I'd first like to start off by saying this isn't the only integration to Salesforce. Um, Salesforce is kind of like Pure Cloud in that it's a, a really uh, broad and diverse platform and there's a number of different things that you can do to interface with it. Um, but when most people talk about an integration to Salesforce, what they're typically referring to is what I'm showing on my screen right now. So it's a client integration that exists inside of the Salesforce UI and it lets you handle the most commonly used agent functions in, in a contact center scenario. So, um, you know, an example would be a call comes in and uh, you get a screen pop, you answer the call, it creates a call log, um, you know, you change your status, you end the call, you go on break, you do all of those contact center agent type things. And you're doing all of that without leaving the Salesforce desktop. So we're taking all of the, the rich contextual information that we've gathered in Salesforce about our cases and our customers and their accounts and the things that they've bought and all of that stuff that, that Salesforce is really good at chronicling um, and providing that as additional context for the interactions that you're handling. Um, so, you know, this is the this is the most common thing that people think of when they think of a Salesforce integration. But I, I want to make sure that I'm clear that this is not the only thing that we do. We've got a lot of other touch points with the Salesforce platform. So, um, you know, just saying a, an integration to Salesforce is a very broad topic. And we're going to talk about one very narrow slice of that with Pure Cloud for Salesforce. So we're going to start from our listing on the Salesforce App Exchange. So this is Salesforce's app marketplace. Um, if you want to uh, run this integration inside your Salesforce organization, you need to start here. You're going to click on this link that says, get it now. When you do that, it's going to ask you to install a managed package in your Salesforce organization. You're going to agree to that. You're going to follow the um, instructions that we have on the Resource Center um, and walk your way through that installation. Once that happens, you'll wind up on a screen that looks like this. And this is where we go and we configure the settings in the managed package. Um, so we lay down a couple call centers by default and a call center is a grouping of configurations that are then applied to groups of users inside of Salesforce. Um, one thing that's really important to understand is that uh, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between a user in Salesforce and a call center. So my agent is going to be assigned to a particular call center. So my user, Richard Schott, in my developer org is assigned to this Pure Cloud for Salesforce Lightning call center. If I have another agent in my organization that needs a different set of configurations, um, I can create another call center and I can assign that user to that. So both of us are in the same Salesforce organization. We're using the same client, but we're getting different behaviors out of it based on our association with these call centers. So when we install the package, we've got a couple of them, uh, a couple of call centers that we have by default that you can create basically as many as you like. And then you're going to pick the one that you want to configure. So in this case, I'm going to look at the one that I'm actually assigned to. So I'm going to select Pure Cloud for Salesforce Lightning. When I do, now I get a UI that shows me all of my configuration options. So this is where I govern most of the behaviors of my client and how it interacts with Salesforce. So I've got settings around whether I'm going to be using SSO, whether I'm going to be using a dedicated login window. Um, I've got navigation behaviors. I say whether I'm using call logging. Um, I talk about whether I'm going to embed my interaction window, whether I can do workspace transfers, which is a really cool feature that I'll touch on briefly because um, I, I think it's one of the more useful features that we have um, in the whole Salesforce integration. Um, 
we've got the ability to uh, do omni-channel status sync. Um, so Salesforce has their own concept of work distribution that they call Salesforce omni-channel. Um, we're able to play very nicely with that, keeping statuses in pure cloud in sync with Salesforce omni-channel. I don't have that set up, so I'm not gonna demo that today, but it is a, a helpful one to know that it exists. Um, but I think the, the most commonly used features are these couple down at the bottom. Um, so the first is our activity field mapping. So if we're using the enable call logging, um, then what we're doing is every time that a call is either received or made by my user in Pure Cloud, when I'm using the Salesforce integration, we create an activity record. So that's saved inside of Salesforce as a task, and I'm gonna go uh, show what those look like in a little bit. Um, but this activity field mapping is what defines what are we writing into that task. So we've got some things that are uh, written into these tasks by default and other things that I can customize. So uh, call duration, wrap up code, conversation ID, um, and after call time are all mapped by default. Um, some of these other things that are in here, like chat transcript, this is actually a custom field that I've created on my task, um, and it's called Pure Cloud Chat Transcript. Um, and then I'm writing a, a reference link from, um, from Pure Cloud into that field in Salesforce. And that's generally how this whole section should be read. So I've got my interaction attributes in Pure Cloud. Um, and the interaction attributes that we support are all documented on the uh, resource center. So th there's specifically an article about interaction attributes. If there's questions about setting this up, I recommend just go giving that article a quick review and uh, it should help you out with all of this. But what we do is we go through and we add a new interaction attribute. So in this case, uh, I wanna get some custom participant data. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to look at participant and I'm looking for an attribute called foo. Um, and now I need to pick a place to map that to. Um, and this actually goes and looks at the task record, uh, task record type and says, what do, what do I wanna map this to? So these can be any of your custom fields. These can be any of the standard fields. You just pick, you know, the information that you want on the interaction and then say, where do you want it to go to on the task record? And that's all there is to setting up the custom call logging. Um, so it becomes pretty quick and easy to, to configure your way into taking all of the information that you want to collect in Pure Cloud and then mapping that to a, a place in Salesforce. Uh, we've got a very similar approach for the interaction view. So for each of the different interaction types, I can customize what does my view look like inside of um, the Pure Cloud for Salesforce client. So what information am I displaying right there at the surface level for the agent? So um, using calls as an example, I've currently got it configured that I'm showing the remote name, the call state, um, the display address, the queue name, and the amount of time that I've been on the call. So I can really quickly see, oh, I'm talking with John Doe, that call is actually connected, and he came in on the customer support queue. So I've got some, some good information that I need to um, just kind of get started on my conversation without getting into any of the Salesforce records or anything like that. I need to know, okay, who am I talking to and where did they come in from? And that, that gives me a baseline for what am, what am I going to be doing here? What should I expect on this call? And then the rest of the Salesforce information can kind of help fill that in. Well, we can customize what those displays look like. Um, and then lastly, we've got the types of things that we search for. So we've got the ability to search Pure Cloud for people and queues. And then we've also got the ability to search for Salesforce records. And we can do this search for our... Uh, outbound dialing and for our transfers. Um, and so I can configure what Salesforce objects am I looking for and which phone fields do I look at when I'm trying to make an outbound call. So I can just start typing for um, uh, like the indie weather line that we like to call here a lot. Um, and 
it will show up if I have them listed in pure cloud as a person, it will show up. If I have that listed as a queue, it will show up. And also if I have that listed as a Salesforce record, it'll show up. Um, so you can really quickly search by name to make calls. It makes the um, whole process of reaching out to contact someone a whole lot easier. Um, and that's really all there is to setting this up. So, you know, our process for getting going with the Salesforce integration is go to the app exchange, click get it now, follow the installation steps, and then configure these couple settings and then assign the call center to a particular user. And once we've done all of that and uh, add the app to our, our view, um, so, you know, my lightning app needs the utility bar component. Once I've set all of that up, now my user's ready to go. Um, so they're, they're ready to start taking calls. Um, so then we get into what are some of the, what are some of the kind of interesting things that you can do with the Salesforce integration. Um, so we mentioned call logging. Um, so I'm, I'm actually going to pull up an example of a, uh, a chat interaction that we had um, because it, it shows off some of the things that we're doing with call logging. So we saw my configuration for my call logs. Um, we had things like the call object identifier. This is the, uh, the ID of the interaction inside of PureCloud. Um, we also had a uh, interaction URL that we're linking. Um, and so that goes into another field on the task record. That gives me a link directly back to the, um, the interaction record inside of PureCloud. Um, and then we've got our chat transcript. Um, so the chat transcript is actually a custom object that we create that documents that whole chat history. Um, and we can take a look at one of these here. So we can see that someone said, hello, hi there, how are you today? And that they're doing great. This was our chat transcript from this interaction record that we created. So you can see there's a, a straight line between what I've created as my activity field mapping and what I'm representing as data inside of Salesforce. Um, so, you know, there are lots of interesting ways that you can configure this, but this is sort of the, the core of the integration. What we're doing is we're trying to create contextual data about the interactions and then allow that to be linked back to Salesforce records. Um, so in this case, you can see that this particular interaction was related to Edna Frank. She was my contact um, and it was also related to this particular case. Um, so this association can be made either manually by the agent or automatically based on our screen pops. Um, in this case, we had an automatic screen pop to the case and then we uh, manually associated it to the contact. And what that does for us is when we go and we look at the contact record, you can see that there is in this related list, this, um, this chat task. Um, so what that does is the next time Edna Frank calls in or sends us a chat or anything like that, um, we can see in our activity feed, the last time that we spoke with them, and the notes that we collected inside of our client. Um, so this allows us to take that contact, of the, the interaction information, um, and associate that with the CRM records. And that gives us now that, that sort of 360 degree view that everyone wants of their, um, of their customers by, by really rounding out that that whole picture so you know we're able to see all of the information that we've collected about edna um we can see that she's the vp of technology and she's at this particular account we've got her phone number email address all of that interesting stuff we can see her open cases whether she was uh, part of any outbound campaigns if she's got an open contract with us you know all, all of that sort of interesting information but we can also see all of the times that we've spoken with her so we're creating this threaded view of when have we talked with this particular customer what did we talk with them about and what were the notes that were associated with it um, and all of that's available on a single page view and it's enabled by this union of Pure Cloud for Salesforce and the Salesforce desktop environment. Awesome, that's, uh, that's really cool stuff. Um, anything else you wanted to cover real quick on this demo? Um, no, I, I think that's really kind of the, the getting to know you 
for uh, for all of that. Um, you know, I, I think the uh, the big thing that that I would like to touch on is um, a lot of people are kind of uh, they're intimidated by um, you know the whole concept of an integration. Like there's there's this um, for some reason there's this feeling that integrations are tough to do and they're hard to set up and you know the, the whole thing is going to be complicated it's going to take a long time to roll out um and one of the things that i would i would like to try and dispel is that um you know that that, that is the case that um you know cloud for salesforce is really easy to use it's really accessible and it's easy to set up and i, I mean and i i hope that's something that, that we've been able to convey is it's a couple mouse clicks to get it installed um, and then it's a few more clicks, um, you know, not a ton of information to get this set up and running. Um, and then once it's up and running, it's really easy to use. Like all of this call logging, most of that stuff happens automatically. Um, if you look at the client that we're running, it's actually really simple. Um, and, I mean, there's not a ton of buttons. There's not a lot of UI to get in the way. Um, answering calls is really easy. Um, making your transfers and all of that stuff really simple to do. So the the basic integration is simple to get, simple to install, and simple to use. Um, you know, the the last time we had to do a walkthrough of an installation with the customer, the uh, the whole process took about 15 minutes from the time that they installed it to the time that they had it up and running and did a test call to one of their users and validated that it was doing the call logging. Um, you know, like I said took about 15 minutes um, and, and that was it. And they're finding a ton of value in having all of this rich Salesforce data surround their interactions for, um, for their contact center. Um, and we were able to set all of that up in just a matter of minutes. So, you know, I, I really want people to understand this is, it, it's quick and easy and, um, and generally accessible to, to most users. Awesome. Well, I think this was a great um, introduction. And, you know, from uh, the Q&A show's perspective, um, you know, when it comes to a topic like Salesforce, I, I think you alluded to it earlier, it's a really deep well. There's tons of stuff to talk about. And so this was just our, you know, first shot at trying to uh, give our, uh, our viewers some knowledge. So if, uh, you know, Richard hit on something that you'd like to see more info on, like the uh, omni-channel sync that he mentioned or something else, please write into the show, QA show at genesis.com and let us know what topics you're interested in and we'll try to get Richard back in. Uh, that'd be great. All right. Awesome. Uh, Richard, anything you else you want to add before we hop in the community and answer some questions? Um, just uh, so one one thing that that I think would be helpful is um, you know we we did mention that uh, that integrations, particularly with particularly with something like Salesforce, are a really broad topic. Um, and one of the things that we've tried to do is to separate all of those different facets of the integration out into their own sort of discrete components. So you can use any of the different integration touch points that we have with, um, with Salesforce generally independent of each other. So, um, you know, even within the, the pure cloud for Salesforce managed package, uh, there are capabilities for routing Salesforce emails. There's uh, stuff associated with, um, doing dialer campaign management. Um, we've got our data actions that are integrating the pure cloud IVR with the Salesforce REST API. Um, there's an integration with our external contact service that, um, that brings Salesforce information into pure cloud. Each of those things is pretty well firewalled and is its own separate thing. Um, so what you're able to do is you're able to go through and derive value from each of them separately. So you can go and set up data actions and get all of the value of data enabling your IVR. And that is its own separate project. Its installation is separate, its management is separate, the way you leverage all of that data is kind of separate. Um, and you can get a bunch of value out of just that. And so it becomes sort of its own discrete IT project to implement that. Installing Pure Cloud for Salesforce and running the client is its own thing. Um, setting up email routing for, um, for Salesforce emails is its own thing. And you're going to attack each one kind of independently. So, you know, I, I would, um, 
I would highly encourage people to go and experiment with these things because, um, you know, in, installing, installing pure cloud for Salesforce, it becomes exponentially more valuable when you have all of those other integration pieces together, but it delivers value on its own. And so, you know, I would highly encourage people who are interested, set up for the trial of it, spend the 15 minutes to get it configured, and use it, experiment with it, figure out if it's gonna work for you. Um, and then as another project, layer on data actions and then look at, okay, do we wanna route Salesforce emails? And then do we wanna get into outbound dialing and like attack each of them separately? And um, you know, don't, don't be afraid to, to tinker with it because they're, each one of them is, is approachable. The configuration effort is generally the same on each of them. Um, but they all just sort of layer on top of each other. So you wind up getting more and more value the more of the, uh, the integration pieces that you use. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for that, that summary wrap up. And um, let's go ahead and head into the community and answer some questions. This first question comes to us from Mohammed. Mohammed wanted to know about an option to sync pure cloud data to Salesforce. He writes, hello there. I'm a newbie to PureCloud and the Salesforce admin now taking over PureCloud, which our org has been using for over three years. And I feel we are not utilizing everything the PureCloud has to offer. We use Salesforce Lightning and Service Cloud to log all calls as cases. I have three questions below that I'm hoping someone can please uh, give me some advice for. Richard, you and I have talked and um, you definitely wanna weigh in on uh, questions one and three. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one. Mohammed continues, I have followed map interaction attributes to Salesforce activity fields article and have created custom activity string fields in Salesforce um, and have configured pure cloud apps client setting by mapping all the activity fields with interaction attributes. See the screenshot below. I have added these fields on the page layout. Whenever a case is created, it doesn't seem to be synchronizing interaction. What could I be doing wrong? Do I need to set up a workflow or process builder for it to trigger? Richard, what do you think? Any advice for Mohammed? Uh, so yeah, so there are a couple different ways to go about this. Um, and and uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm really uh, keying on in what he's asking is the, the fact that there are cases um, and then the, the standard activity records that, uh, that we create as part of the Pure Cloud for Salesforce integration. So we're writing all of our information to those activity records um, and we're doing that on an, on an ongoing basis. Um, and the timing of that is kind of important and I, I think is going to be helpful in this question. So as soon as the call comes in, we initially create an activity record and we write as much information as we know about the interaction to the activity record at that point. But there may be other things like the, um, like the wrap up code or the handle time or the after call work time uh, that we have to write along later. Also the notes and things like that. Those, none of those exist right when the call comes in. So as the call comes in, we create that activity record. If you're using that as the point where uh, you've got some automation to try and carry information from the activity record to your case object, you may run into some problems there. Um, what would be a better solution would be to try and trigger on one of those fields that is going to happen later, either on the, um, either on the disposition of the call or ideally um, several minutes after the, uh, the last save of the interaction um, or of the activity record. Uh, the other thing that you can do is run something uh, like in process builder um, or potentially a scheduled job that runs inside of Salesforce to migrate information off of the activity record up to the, um, up to the uh, case record and have that run on a schedule that happens sometimes after the interaction disconnects. Um, the other option that you have is to use um, uh, referential links or, or formula links that say this field on my case equals the value that's on the most recent activity record. Um, especially if there's a one-to-one -one mapping between calls and cases, 
um, you can you can get away with that pretty easily. Um, so that instead of even needing to copy information over, it's a um, it's a referred link. So it will be updated every time the um, every time the activity record is updated. So if it ever changes at some later date, that will also flow back through to the case. So there, there's a couple ways that you can approach that one. Um, but I, I think the big thing is um, trying to get away from that that very busy time when we first create the activity record, right? When the call comes in and we're filling out a whole bunch of data, if you have automation that's keying off of that, there may be fields that don't exist and aren't populated yet. And so that may be why you're having issues syncing things back up to that case object. Cool. Um, let's go ahead and do question number three real quick. I would like to know if there is any possibility of synchronizing or pulling agent performance and agent summary reports from PureCloud. To Salesforce. I'm planning to show number of hours an agent was on queue, calls received, call direction with customer information together. Has anyone set up anything? Um, thanks so much. What do you think, Richard? Uh, so yeah, um, and this is probably going to be a theme in most of my answers. Um, there's, there's really sort of two ways that you can go about this. So one, um, our call logs are writing to that sales uh, standard Salesforce task record. Um, and we write a bunch of information over to there, including the uh, call duration and wrap up time and, and all of that information. Um, that all rolls up directly into the Salesforce reporting platform. So Salesforce has a lot of sophisticated tooling to be able to report on Salesforce objects, and that includes their task records. So they actually have out of the box reports that are things like uh, my calls today, my um, uh, my calls this week, uh, all calls today. Um, so those are some of the standard reports that are out there. And you can actually modify those to, um, to pull those task records based on any number of criteria that are in there. Um, there's also some interesting ways to do faceting within the Salesforce report. So you can say that you want to summarize all of that information based on the related object information. So you can say, how much time have I spent talking to a particular account or how much time have I spent on a particular case or how much time on average have I spent on calls related to cases. Um, so there's a lot of interesting information that exists inside the Salesforce platform and is actually enriched by that contextual data inside of Salesforce. So being able to say, how much time am I spending per business activity is a little different than saying, how much time was I spending on queue or how much time was I spending on a, an average interaction? Um, so you're able to kind of create a better linkage between um, you know, the business activities and how much time you're spending on those things as opposed to um, inferring it from contact center data. So that, that's sort of one approach is leveraging the out of the box uh, Salesforce reports that exist and seeing if that's gonna get you the kind of information and answer the sort of business questions you're interested in. Um, the other option is because Pure Cloud is an API for API first platform, um, all, of the, all of the reporting data is available through the analytics API. So you can actually run a scheduled job inside of Salesforce that hits the uh, Pure Cloud public API, and fetches all the information that you're interested in, and then syncs that over to custom objects you've created or um, you know, however you wanna organize things inside of Salesforce, and then run additional reporting from in there. Um, and actually, now that I'm thinking about it, there's there's one other potential option to um, to uh, create a small web application that's also using the the analytics API and potentially run that as something like a um, a lightning component. Um, so actually embed that inside of the Salesforce desktop. So um, you know, the more I think about it, I, I think there's really sort of three ways to go about it: either use the out of the box. Uh, Salesforce reporting, um, use the public API to import pure cloud data into Salesforce and then take over with the reporting or um, potentially use a web application and just embed that inside of Salesforce. So you're not actually importing data, you're more accessing it live and then trying to visualize it from there. Awesome. Thanks for joining us for this two-part episode. Did you enjoy having a, two, a second segment dedicated entirely to Salesforce? If so, write into the QA show. It's just QA show at genesis.com and let us know your thoughts. Are there any other segments that you would like to see a deep dive on? We'd love to give you the information that you 
crave. We'll be back soon with our holiday season to close out 2020. And we can't wait to see you then. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Thanks for tuning in for this week's episode. We hope it was helpful and maybe a little bit entertaining. Each week, our hosts and experts review community discussions and debate what content to discuss so your voice matters. Do we miss something? Do you have a question for the show? Let us know. Join the conversation at the Genesis online community. As a Genesis customer or partner, you can create an account. Just click the sign-in button found on most pages and follow the necessary instructions to create an account. Also, feel free to email us at qashow at genesis.com. We'd love to hear from you. If this is your first episode, welcome. You can view our entire archives. Go to the helpful links panel found on most community pages and find the QA show archive that interests you. We appreciate your support of the show and the community. Cheers.